Hello, welcome to my channel, Donna Creations and More. I am Donna. Today is a tutorial on the Easter gingerbread train. Now I'm going to share with you all my molds that I'll be using. Here is a chocolate bar mold. This is my gingerbread kids mold I got from Amazon. An ice cream mold from Amazon. Two macaroon molds. I just got these from AliExpress. This was from Temu. This is a lollipop Easter bunny mold. Some of these I don't remember where they come from. Like this one, I think from Temu. This one's a bow, Amazon. All the good quality ones are Amazon. Chocolate bar, smaller one. Little carrots, Amazon. Temu, this is like cupcakes, cookies, cups, clocks. This one I got from Amazon, the Christmas one, but we're only going to be using two of the gingerbreads out of it. And then this one I've had a long time and I got it from Michael's back in the day. When I first started doing clay. And it's a push mold. Mm -hmm. And I can't even see who it's by. So we're going to start off with the boat bell. I have this package of clay. And this white clay, foam clay that I got from Amazon. So I'm going to use this darker pink here. More like a hot pink. Yeah, they're a little difficult to get open. But I get all my foam clay from Amazon. It's a really good deal. And this was the first time me ever buying this little multi-assorted pack of colors. And I actually really like it. And I'm going to show you how easy it is to do multi-colors. I see what I want to do is... Well, I guess I'll leave it like this. I was thinking of zooming it in. Uh, let me zoom in so you guys can see. Okay, much better. So you can see exactly how I do that. You can really feel if it's too high or too low. You just want to make sure you get your edges very good in all your points. You can add little by little with foam clay, or with any clay. I'm just working it in, pressing it down, make sure I get all the detail. And I'm checking my edges to make sure they're all nice and neat. Nothing's running over, nothing's missing. And then I take it and turn it over and I push it down and press it on my surface. If any clay runs over you will see it and just check your edges again to make sure you're good.
now we're going to start with this little chocolate molds here. And I want to do like a milk chocolate and a dark chocolate. So let me readjust the camera one second because I am watching this as I record. Okay, now we got a really good view of both of the molds. And I'll probably be doing that through the whole video because I didn't run through and edit it. I am doing it as I'm doing the voiceover. So this clay, we're supposed to knead it and all, but I really don't, just a little bit. It works very well, just me pulling it out of the bag and just squishing it around for a second and using it. So you just want to press it in and make sure, you can tell if you got too much because it'll feel lumpy. And make sure you got all your edges very well. And you're flat as possible. And you press in really good. To get all that detail. Now, I was going to do Plaster of Paris to do this project, but I'm doing this the last minute because I want you guys to be able to hit the Easter clearance and get any of the Easter supplies that I use in this video now. Or this weekend before they're gone. This was my last Easter project and I've been dying to do it. And it's been taking me a while. I actually been working on this for a couple of days. Of making a lot of macaroon wheels and all but I just wanted to demo some of the candy pieces and all that I'm doing in color and I want to demo how I did the gingerbread kids because if you saw they were Christmas but they're not going to be Christmas once we're done. So I apologize this video is going to be long. You can fast forward it. But I really wanted to explain and demonstrate exactly how to do foam clay. Or any clay in all these different types of molds. Because you've noticed I had all different kinds. I had really flimsy ones. I have solid ones. I have plastic ones. So first let me just say. I would like to wish you all a happy Easter. I hope you have a great holiday if you're one of my subscribers welcome back I appreciate you so much and thank you all for watching and following me I couldn't do this without you guys I love sharing my crafts I'm still learning I was never a crafter until I started YouTube yes I never craft until YouTube 
I did jewelry making and I tried a couple little things but I never really craft. So that one had too much, and you could tell. One, you could feel that it's too much. And two, because it'll feel like a lump. And then two, when you press down, it's going to ooze out. And again, make sure you check all your edges and corners. And just work the clay in little by little. You want to press it in really good to make sure you get all that detail. And you want to press towards all your edges. And as you see I'm doing here, I'm making sure I'm pressed it, pressing in all directions to my edges. To make sure I get all the detail. It don't matter how hard I'm pressing on this mold. Because I'll get all that. Every little detail into this foam clay. And as you see I just. That was pressed over a little. So I just fixed the edge. You can tell once you turn it over and flip it. Whatever is ex excess. On in the mold will push outward. If this is a tiny little bit, you can just rub it back in and clean your edge up. So here I'm just trying to figure out what colors I want to use yet next for our next mold. I was going to do two different types of carrots. Oh, that is way too bright. And then I realized once I was putting the green next to it, that was more of a peach color than an orange color. And that one was too bright. So we're going to go with these two colors. Now I'm going to show you how to add your clay into your molds using two different colors. Now these little baggies were a struggle. You can always re put your clay into another bag. But you start right at the stem part and we want to pull backwards and press our thumb in or finger into the mold as we're pulling. So it'll be we're sliding it back, pressing at the same time, so then the clay will be level even and we'll pull the excess off just like that and then you just want to double check your edges really well we want all that detail them little leaves and I was just checking to see if I went over but I didn't You know, like over into the part of the carrot. Then we're going to take our orange and we're going to do the same thing. We're going to start at the stem part. We're going to press it in. And 
that one I didn't have to do it the other way because I didn't have a lot of clay. Now we got to start this one so you got to turn it around put the clay in press it in and same thing press and pull and then you're going to adjust it all make sure you press it in you push over do you have all your edges nice and neat and perfect if you're still extra just pull it off And that one felt like a little too much still, so I pulled some extra off. Now I'm going to lay it back down on my surface and press and flip it over and press it really good. Now you saw there on that carrot that one edge needed a little bit more. This is the easiest way to do your mold. And then I also have a video on how to use regular air dry clay in your molds. To make them perfect and smooth too. So if you're interested, check that out. Depends what type of clay you're using. So now we're going to start with this Easter mold. So we're going to take some of our white clay. And I'm grabbing a big handful because I'm going to be doing a lot of molds. Now this one's a flimsier mold, super thin. So we're just gonna knead our clay for a few seconds. Let me move this stuff out of your guys' way. I notice I always leave things around and it blocks the view. Now here I'm doing two little bunny heads. There's a reason for this. And you'll see that as the video goes along. What we're going to use these for. So since these are flimsy. I picked them up. And I really press them in good and I flip them over and I press and I just keep working with it and making sure my edges are good like I am right now and if I need any more clay I add it if I don't I don't so now we're going to do this other little bunny and then we're going to do it piece by piece here This was like the really very first time I really worked with foam clay. I mean, I've used it like one other time. And it worked out pretty nice so far. One thing I like about foam clay is lightweight. So if you're making Christmas ornaments or whatever, ornaments for your Easter tree, ornaments or whatever, you know. They're light. So now we're going to make another bunny head. Again, you'll see the reason why later on. For this, you don't have to use the mold, but I end up using these for and I'll explain that later. 
you can freehand them or use something else, but I'll tell you that later. Let's just get all of our clay in all ready for our Easter train. All of our little embellishments. Now see, I had too much clay on this egg. So I'm going to take some out. Reroll it. And then press it in real good. I'm not just too concerned with the back is totally flat and even as long you know what I mean like smooth you can make it smooth if you want if you watch my other video you gotta dip your hand in water and rub it out your hand your finger in water and just smooth it out Now that one had a pretty big dent, so I went to add more. So, since it's just an egg, I figured I'd just re-roll it and press it back in. If it was more detailed, I wouldn't have did that. Or you can, that's up to you. I'm just demonstrating how I did it, and I'm also demonstrating how which pieces I made for this train I'm using and another way you can use all your molds so now I have this I don't even recommend Temu I don't even want to say their name but that's where it came from but I'm sure you can get it from Wish AliExpress anywhere this little lollipop mold but I want to do this lollipop mold in three different chocolate colors white chocolate milk chocolate and dark chocolate so that's what i'm gonna do and this is a really hard mold as in I mean there's no flexibility it's a hard plastic so it'll be interesting to see how this turns out I've never used a mold like this with um, foam clay. Normally I would use, like, I don't even know if I would use plaster or Paris. I don't know. Plaster or Paris I used in candy mold. Like the plastic ones that are flimsy. So we'll see how this turned out. Now I know it would probably work great for resin. We'll see. I decided to do this at the last minute. Look, them baggies are a struggle. I think I'm... As a, I want to get an airtight container, maybe, or just another zip-up baggie, and that way I don't have to zip them up, because they are really tough. And I'm just going to slowly add my clay in, piece by piece. And really make sure I get down in that bow. Now I'm thinking of using these in my gingerbread Easter train. 
we will say If not, I will save them. It depends if they look too big. Again, just keep working your clay in. The more you press, the better you are. The more detail you're going to get. That's why I like working with Plaster of Paris because it gets every little detail, but then Plaster of Paris is fragile. You drop it, you break it. Here I'm grabbing some toothpicks. That's going to be my little lollipop sticks. I'm in my kitchen. That's what was at hand. I didn't even realize these were like four lollipops until I just noticed there was a little hole there because the clay was coming out and then I just added some extra clay over top of the toothpick area to make it more secure see how like thin it is once you push the toothpick in so I wanted to add more I don't even recommend using this for like a lollipop stick like the hole so little I would recommend wooden skewers or toothpicks but I guess what would you get when you get something from Temu and the reason I don't recommend Temu is a personal thing I've been scammed twice by them so I don't even like saying their name but I wanted to let you guys know where they came from but I also want you to let you know my experience yes I was scammed twice by my bank account and my credit card and for five months they kept trying to charge my credit card almost a hundred dollars and my credit card kept kicking it back thank god so proceed with caution watch your accounts if you order from them i even have a friend that was an ambassador that worked for them as advertising and she was scammed And I have other friends that were scammed after we told them to keep an eye out on their bank account or however they're paying. And they were like, oh my goodness. So, watch how you, just watch your accounts, you guys. That's all I have to say. I'm not recommending Temu. I'm totally against them. I gave them a one star on Google. And I flat out said they were scammers. Some people haven't been scammed. And some people have. I, I don't know. Why some have. And when some haven't. Or. Why. Maybe they just haven't caught it. I don't know. Enough of this conversation. I just wanted to give you my thoughts and reviews and feelings on that website. And I will never, ever, ever work with them. And I deleted the app. After two orders from them. But I wanted to share where I got my mold from, so... I even did have on my channel, when I first ordered from them, a review, review of opening all my supplies of everything. But that video, shh, deleted.
because I just don't recommend them. Again, enough of that conversation. Let's move on to my video. So you basically have seen several different molds here. Um, we use a very flexible, flimsy mold. Oh, here's a different one. And then, then I'll make it a little faster. This is like a plastic push mold. I got them at Michael's a long time ago. When I first started clay. And you just start by working in the clay. And you're just pushing and pulling. Pushing and pulling. And making sure you work your edges. So we're going to push, push, pull, push, pull. Try to smooth it out. Pull off any excess. Push, push, push. Make sure it's in there. Get all that detail. One good thing is you can look through the front. Now you see in the middle some of that clay came up. We're going to push that back down. Recheck all your edges. Always keep checking your edges. The back don't have to be perfect, but the sides and the front does. So, I mean, this is another reason why it's taking me a while to get this video up. Because I have to make a lot of these. I'm doing both of these. Again, we're going to do the same thing. We're going to push, pull, and work our sides. And so this is like more or less the last mold that is different. So we're going to speed this up a little now after this one is done. Because it's going to be like the same process repeating. And you see how much, <clears throat> excuse me, you see how much time I'm taking, I'm making sure. Okay, now we're just going to speed up this video, and we're just going to continue the same process with the macaroon mold and the ice cream mold. We're just going to press them in real good. Press it down. Check our edges. I had to make so many macaroons. Because I'm using them for my wheels. It took me forever to make them. I had to make 16. I think it was 16. Or 12. 12 of the small macarons. And then I made many of the larger macarons too. And then of course I told you that mold we just did. I had to make many of them too, so this was like a two day process of making clay products for this project. Now you can look from the side view and tell that was too much. And you can feel it, it's lumpy. Now see how flat it is. Now, if this is too fast for you, you can slow it down by going in your settings. But turn the volume off because I'm going to sound really weird. <laughs> but you can go in your settings and go to 0.25 and slow the video down. Or whatever speed you would like. So now we're going to do the gingerbread kids. 
Now I am going to slow this down right here. I slowed this down because I really wanted to explain this one. I'm only doing these three gingerbread kids on the bottom. This is a great mold. It comes with two in a package off of Amazon. So you can always get one for yourself and gift it. But you want to really work them in because it's flimsy. And really keep working it and pressing it in. I'm not saying it's going to come out perfect because some of mine didn't. And I had to redo them. So you can see I have too much clay. So I just kept working it, pushing it in, pushing it both directions as much as I can, trying to get all the detail and try to make it not have any mistakes in it. And we'll see what happens when we go to unmold them in a few more minutes once we are done. gonna be a few more minutes for you guys but as you will see from the video once I demo it's not going to be a few minutes again check your edges always always just press 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 for detail check your edges that's my number two recommendations. You can also use a rolling pin to try to smooth it out too. You know, a little one. You'll actually see in the video I have end up using uh, here, right here, just something in my kitchen, my olive oil spray bottle. Only because I just want to make sure that clay is going to get all the detail because the mold is so flimsy. And that would be where, again, I like using plaster of Paris. So we'll see how these ones turn out. Now you can see, look. Check your edges. You see the foot had a gap. I just constantly press and check, press and check. And now we're going to do a girl gingerbread and a boy gingerbread. So we have the kids. Now we're going to do mama and papa. And I'm just going to press it in little by little. Same little way I've been doing. Press and pull. Just work the clay in. Get all that detail. Make sure you're at your edges. If you need more, add more. If you have too much, take it away.
I noticed that the feet needed a little bit more because it wasn't that thick. And we're going to do the same thing with the little girl. I can... Don't need a lot in the beginning. I just want to have a thin layer or whatever. Just to press it in and get all the detail. And I keep adding clay as I go. The more time you take here, the better your pieces turn out, and then you have new work at the end. Again, if you're worried about the back being completely smooth and perfect, Dip your finger in some water and just smooth it out. And use a wet paper towel. I really recommend for you to watch the how to make perfect embellishment with air dried clay. And again, I will link that in the description box of this video. That way you will be able to get a great idea of another way of making them completely perfect front and back. I really just want to share all my tips and tricks that I have with you and the best of the knowledge that I have to help you guys now out. Now we're done with them too. I'm gonna set them aside. Now we got this other little flimsy one that's um that I got from Again, or maybe I didn't get this from Temu. I think I got this from Wish. I'm sorry. Wish takes longer to ship, but it's legit. And they might cost a little bit more. But you only pay like a dollar for these type of molds. Okay, and we're still going to work it, check our edges, constantly check your edges. And we're also going to do like that little cracker there, that is super thin. And I'm going to show you how to mix two colors together. To get the color I would desire. So I really just hope this video is helping you guys out. And I'm spending it very well. If you like gingerbread trains. I did a really awesome fake bake looking one for Christmas. I will link that in my description box. I am doing this one different than that one. Sort of something like it, but still different. Now the locomotive part is going to be somewhat the same. And that's what I'm going to be using this little part here that I'm doing. It's like a little vase. I'm going to be using it on my locomotive part. For my little steam pipe. Later on in this video, I'm going to be using puppy paint. I did Google it. You can put puppy paint in the oven for 150 degrees for 3 to 4 minutes. To get it to dry quickly or use a heat gun 
So I will be using a heat gun. So I just wanted to share that little tip with you guys also. Since I just learned that. Now I'm grabbing a uh, different color for the crackers. In here I have this really light looking taupe brown color but it's not light enough. So I'm going to take equal parts of the white clay and this color clay. I don't know what it's called. And I'm going to blend them really good together to get a lighter color. And it works out pretty good because you'll find out I don't have enough. And because I did it like equal amounts, I was able to still make the same color. This is a really thin little cracker. I mean really thin. So we're just going to do the same thing, work it in, and really check them edges because we want all that detail. And see now the excess came out. Once you pressed it onto this flat surface. So I'm just going to remove that. And then rework it in. Pull it in, get my edges perfect as I can. Now we're going to do the other one, and you'll see here I do not have enough. So I'm going to take a liney little piece, and I'm going to use equal of this color and equal of white again, and just blend it. Now you can just get white clay and add paint to it to make it any color you want. Super messy, but I've done it. So we're just going to continue working on our edges since this is a lot of little scallop edges and check all of our pieces. Now that one piece needs a little bit more clay. You saw the indent. I don't mind if it's off a little bit but that was pretty major. So I just added some more clay in. Same with that one. Now in this video I'm sharing everything from the be beginning to the end. When I did my last train, when I did my gingerbread kids, I did that in a separate video. I will also link that in my description box because I did them totally different than on here. And then when you're done with your clay, make sure you get out most of the air as possible. My last gingerbread were more like Candyland fake bake theme. Now we're going to take all of our molds and we're going to put them in the freezer. So I'm trying to hold the camera at the same time with taking all these molds. 
over to the freezer and put them all in here. So I'm going to continue adding them all into my freezer. Here they all are in there. Close it up. Nope, I got to add the rest. Sorry, I thought I was done. Now we're done. Close it up. And let's go to our microwave, set it for 30 minutes, the timer, and then come back and get them out. And now to the fun part of demolding these. Now the first bunny got smashed in my freezer, but doesn't matter because we're using them for something else. And I'm going to show you before we're done here. I know it's hard to tell the design, but you can see all that work paid off. Do not let them touch each other because once they start defrosting, they will stick together. These ones you just, these are push molds, so you just push them as you go along. We will be using these on our Easter train for detail. So right now they're frozen. They, they will defrost quickly. So you don't have much time to work. I was curious about these. I was really scared because the plastic is a little harder. And it's really hard to see the detail on this camera. What the heck? I apologize. I don't know if it's because it's the white clay. Oh, it is. Because it's white clay. You see, they did turn out. I didn't want to force it and break it where the stick was. You can see a lot better on the chocolate ones. So now we have our vanilla, our milk chocolate, and our dark chocolate. Here's our one little gingerbread girl. And the gingerbread boy. Let me grab the rest of them. So we can all unmold them all at once. So here we have the macaroons. Now I flip these upside down and push them out. One little dent in the very top. You can smooth that out once it defrosts. But we tried our best to make sure we got all the detail. The ice cream turned out perfect. Ice cream scooped in. So I got some chocolate in it. Now here's the carrots. I just push from the bottom very gently. And look how perfect that turned out.
So I'm just pushing very gently and popping them out. And there's only one little spot I gotta fix and just pop it off with my nail. That one was almost perfect. This is that thin little cracker. Look how thin that is. So we're just going to let these air dry. And again, I'm just pushing them up from the bottom to pop them out. So all that work did pay off because it there's barely any that has any mark. I think the only one had a mark on it was the macaroon. Now the bow. I was scared on this one, but luckily it's frozen. I didn't want to snap it in half. Now we're going to do the chocolate candies. Again, I'm showing you I'm pushing from the back. Do not let them touch. Or they will be stuck together. Here, I'm going to give you a close-up so you can see the two colors. Of like the milk chocolate and I'm going to call it the dark chocolate. And here are the bigger candy bars. And they all turned out perfect. Now here's the kids. Now these are pretty thick, so I push and pull at the same time. Sorry, I went out of frame on that one. There we go. So I just pushed and pulled it out. Now I am getting already stuck together. So I'm going to make some room here. So I can show you how I'm doing these little gingerbread kids. This is just one part of it. To transform them into Easter ones. So I have this cupcake mold. I'm going to take a little bit of my white clay throw it in a ball and I'm just going to push it in the very top of the cupcake because I just want the whipped cream part or the icing part whatever you want to call it oh, alright the icing part And because these molds are so flimsy, with foam clay, you can pop them out. And I'm going to put that as top of his head. So he don't have a hat, he has a whipped cream topping head. So I'm going to transform him from this Christmas looking... I'm transforming them from Christmas to Easter. I also wanted to make them look different than my last gingerbread kids that I made. So now I'm going to take this little white bunny. Remember this is frozen so it is going to stick together as it's defrosting. I'm going to take a little bit of white clay of the foam clay, make a ball, and then make a little log. And I'm going to uh, not get it stuck to the bunny. Add it on to his little arm that's there because we're going to make him look like he's holding the Easter bunny. So we're just going to add a, the little log on there we made. And we're just going to blend it into his arm that's already there.
I apologize, it's a little hard to see because it's white, but maybe you'll be able to see better with this carrot. So on the other side, we're going to add the carrot. Now, I still have to paint these and all yet. And that will be next after they sit overnight and dry. So we're doing the same thing, making a little log. And blending his arm into it, his existing arm. To make it look like he's holding the carrot for the bunny. And the Easter bunny. So as you see, you can transform your mold into other things. You just gotta use your imagination. I just hope me sharing this with you helps you guys. So now we're going to continue with this one. And he, as you can tell, has like a present on his belly. So we're going to... Take a piece of chocolate and cover that present up and he's going to be holding a chocolate bar. And we're going to do the same thing. Roll it up and then make a little log and give him some little hands, extended hands and bunch it into his arm. I recommend doing this while they are frozen and defrosting because they defrost quick. That way you're not messing it up from touch handling handling it with your hands. Super cute. Loving this so far. I even love how I did all my kids and mama and papa cut and tail. And now we're going to do this little they girl. They are the Easter bunnies. And we're going to add her holding a little Easter egg. This one I'm going to put an Easter egg on her. And do the same thing, give her some arms holding the egg. Make sure I don't cover up her mouth. And do the, repeat the same process. Extend her arms. Again, it don't have to be perfect. I did just find after my craft room clean when I was organizing and my next molds in my last do video, Mama and two whole Papa. boxes of different molds, but I'm still missing my thicker gingerbread mold that I did a video on when but I did a transformation Mr. And Mrs. of, I think, Cotton the Hobby Lobby one. But anyhow, or so I would have used that one. As the parents for Mr. and Mrs. Cottontail. The only difference was the girl wouldn't have had a dress, etc. And I would have had to make it. So maybe it is better that I just used the mold that I did. And then I'm going to finish doing so these. one holding the eggs. Explain to you how I'm doing them. And then let these sit and dry. Now let's do the mama gingerbread. So here I have the mama I had and the, the Easter, Easter basket, basket I, made. I made. Or I should say the girl. I'm going to take a be little the mama. piece of clay. Same as I did. And just roll it into a little log. In my Christmas. Well I wouldn't even call it Christmas train. I'm going to call it a fake big train. Because that's what it is. It was made with fake big stuff. This one was the mama and the papa with the kids. 
So I just made a little snake out of the foam clay, attached it to the basket, and I'm messing it all up, and I put it in the wrong spot, trying to move it over. So it looks like she's carrying an Easter basket. Like Mama and Papa's carrying an Easter basket for their kids. So remember them bunnies we made? We only made them for the ears, but you don't have to make a bunny for ears. You can freeform your ears with your hand. Or I was going to use like little white pipe cleaners and cut them and bend them down to little ears until I realized I had this mold. And you see it's already defrosting. So I just had to reshape it. So I recommend leaving these in the freezer at the last minute. And we're going to turn her into Mrs. Gingerbread Cottontail. Now I'm going to take my little toothpick, try to blend the ears in best as I can. And do not do what I'm getting ready to do here. I'm trying to pull it off because it's going to mess it up. Take your razor blade and cut off the clay or wait until it's air dried and cut it off. And here's what she looks like so far before I paint her. Now we got to do Mr. Cottontail. So Mr. Cottontail is going to get some ears too. But I didn't make his basket. I forgot to make two. So I have to make another one. It's in the freezer. And add that to it off camera. The same way I did her. And I think I will put the basket in his other hand. She'll hold it on the left and he'll hold it on the right. I am really trying to get this video up and running by Easter. So you guys can hit the Easter clearance and get whatever you need. Two things I recommend getting is tons of plastic Easter eggs for other DIYs that I'll be doing. And I think these also the Easter egg dot. Who said gingerbread couldn't be for Easter, too? Why not? People are doing it for Christmas and Valentine's. I wanted to do Valentine's this year, but I didn't get a chance. I didn't get a lot of Valentine's videos out. And that's only because that's when I started back on YouTube after having surgery on my back. And I was finally able to move some after having sciatica so bad. I'm trying to fix the ears. I'm not happy with the way the ears are. And I do end up changing her ears. I'm going to take the, blend them in better, but I am going to change her ears. And I will show you that in a minute. So here's Mr. and Mrs. Cottontail at this moment. Now I'm getting my mold so I can make another Easter basket and put that in the freezer. So he'll have an Easter basket too.
I try to do it like I did with the um, whipped cream topping, icing topping. Just put it in and pop it out. It does not work. You don't get all the detail and you mess it up. It only worked on the whipped cream topping because it was only a little piece and I pushed from a different area. So now here I have the missus and I went and bent her little ears to make her like a little lop ear bunny. And I think I have like a little bow I can add to her. But here they are so far. And stay tuned, and we'll get to painting them and decorate them. And then I know there was already like a marking in the ears, but I'm going to put an indentation. Because isn't that what bunnies ears do? They go inward. So if you ever want to see my bunnies. or I have them on another video. And it says it in the title of the, the video. They are so god darn adorable. I have two little Jersey Wooly bunnies. So if you want to see them. Check that video out too. Go underneath my videos. And click on it and watch the video. I apologize. I'm going out of frame. I did not realize it. I'm trying to work with these ears. So I'm happy with them. So that's what we have so far. Now I'm going to put this in the freezer. Like I said. And then finish him up. And then we'll come back to... Paint all this stuff. Happy Easter, my crafty friends. It's taken me a little longer than I expected to finish this project. So, oh, give me one second and let me add all the paint colors for you. Here's the list of all the paint colors that I've used. So, first, we're starting with the Mink Crush. And I've already did a coat on all my pieces. And I'm just doing a second coat. So I hope you all had a wonderful Easter. I'm going to try my best to get this video done tonight so I ha can have it up so you guys can grab some things if you need to from the Easter section on clearance. Here I have seafoam green. And I'm just painting the um, two different sizes of the macaroons. And one of the cupcakes. But in the sea from green, I only did two of the small macaroons and one large. Only because I need another color. Here we're going to use the Sachet Lavender and we're going to coat our macaroons and our cupcake. Our cupcake bottom I should say. That paint the top white. Next we're going to use Cameo Paint. And please stay tuned. Everything that I have left over. I am putting in a baggie. And I'm going to be selling it. And I will be showing you exactly. What's going in that bag. And what I will be selling. And if you're interested. Comment below. And I'll be putting that in my Etsy store. 
for you to purchase. I'm not sure on the price, but if I get a lot of response, I might make a lot of them. That way people don't have to go out and buy all the molds to make the little gingerbread kids. I figured I would sell, but I'm not what I have left over. So now I'm using the pale daffodil. And it's basically just an Easter kit. Because I made one set, then I made another for video purposes. Now I'm using blue cotton. All these paints I got off of Amazon for 50 cents. By Apple Barrel. Now I'm taking some soda bottle caps. Always save your caps. You never know what you can use them for in your craft. I'm going to take some Waverly chalk paint and Snow White. And give them a second coat. And the reason I'm using the Waverly chalk paint is because it coats so well. Than the um, acrylic paints. And we're not really going to see the wheels anyhow because we're putting those um, macaroons on them. The ones that are half macaroons. So next I have white acrylic paint that I painted all them on um, one clay pieces in. Then I'm gonna take some Mod Podge. And I'm just going to give them all a coat with the Mod Podge to make them nice and glossy. If anybody's interested in any of these foam pieces, just shoot me a message. You can also contact me on Instagram. And Adana Creations and more. I'll be more than happy to make them for you and sell them to you. Might take me a couple of days because it took me several days to make these. And so here are my little gingerbread kids that I already made. And I'm just giving them a good coat of the Mod Podge. And yes, I broke my little carrot top. So I'm just going to glue that on with the Mod Podge. Again, we made them out of the color clay. So I didn't even paint them. Now this one I did paint. 
and I used the color light mocha for my gingerbread color. I didn't bore you with, want to bore you with tons of painting, but I did want to be able to share what colors I used and then how I coated them and how, you know, they look so far. This video is already long enough and I apologize, but in order for me to show you from the beginning to the end, of every step. Here's my little gingerbread I did that's holding the chocolate candy bar. If you're interested in just me making for the gingerbread kids, I can do that. Or if you just want the mama and papa, which I just showed your mama, but you'll see her again. Cause I gotta fix her dress in the mint green. She needs another coat. I'm calling her. Mrs. Gingy Cottontail. Now the set I'm selling is not painted. Except for one gingerbread, I did paint the light mocha color, but if you don't want that one and you want a plain white one, I'll be glad to make another one. So I'm just taking more of my Mod Podge, and now here is Mr. Gingy Cottontail. It actually took me a very long time to make all these pieces and to paint them. And these I painted in seafoam green and a pale daffodil. This is what's going to go on my Easter train. And then here's all the clay pieces that we made. And I just coated them in Mod Podge. This was the color clay. And then I'm going to give my ice cream scoop a coat of Mod Podge too. Here's one I was going to sell, but I accidentally painted the egg, so I'm just going to keep it 
and I'm painting it with a light mocha. But one of them eggs is included in the kit. Everything just about basically is included except for the macaroons and my little trim pieces that I made. You'll see what everything is going into it. So everything you paint coat with Mod Podge to make it all nice and glossy. And then touch up anything you have to with your white paint. Anything you ever see that I make if you're interested in buying instead of making yourself, just shoot me a message. And if I have it and I can, I will. Here I was dotting the eyes on the gingerbread. I apologize it went out of frame. But then you'll see the rest of what I do. I just used the end of my paintbrush and dyed those little eyes. And I'm going to take the little um, cameo pink and just give them a little pink nose and pink cheeks. Then I'm going to take my dotting tool and just rub it along the edge of his mouth. And if you mess up any of it, just touch it up with the paint again. And I'm just touching up because this is the one I just painted. I'm retouching it so many times. Okay, now here's my tray of pieces. See how that one gingerbread to the left is painted brown? Well, I went and washed it all. But the other one I left because I didn't want the pieces to come apart. Everything I add in the bag is included in the Easter kit I'm selling. So it's basically everything that's on this tray and I will show you every single item and I will put it in the bag.
The only thing I don't put in the bag is this gingerbread because I just washed the paint off. So here I'm just giving you a view. of everything. There's four Gingy kids. Mr. and Mrs. Cottontail. Then there's two extra gingerbreads of the man, the girl and the boy. along with all these other pieces. And then there's two sets of ears there if you want to add them one. Like I said, I have one, just one set of album. If I get many responses, I can make more. So, let me go grab the bag and show you exactly what I'm going to put in it. One of these days I'm going to. I was debating if I should add more. Okay, here I have my zip up baggie. <clears throat> I'm going to add the ice cream cone. Ice cream cone. Ice cream scoop. The gingy that's holding, I think the chocolate bar. Yes. The gingy with the carrot, the female. The other gingy kid with that I put the ice cream top on and holding a bunny. And the other one with the ice cream top holding a bunny and a carrot. This is a cute little Easter bunny head. Another little bunny. The male gingerbread with the basket and then the two sets of ears and then the female with the basket the gingerbread girl and the gingerbread boy but again like i said it's wet so i can't add it then you're gonna get another gingerbread girl and an extra gingerbread boy an easter bag another easter basket a cupcake Two Easter eggs. One was with the one design I told you. The other one I think is like a bow. This little bunny. Two chocolate bars. Two large carrots. And then two smaller ones. And then for these little crackers. So if you're interested, let me know in the comments below or message me on Instagram on the Donna Creations and more. And that bag will be sold to someone who's interested.
now to make our train. Here I have a bunch of houses I ordered off of Amazon. Of different gingerbread houses. Come four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So nine houses. I thought these were super cute. You can add a little light inside if you want. But I'm going to use this house as a packet. And I'm painting it the same color as I did my gingerbread. The light mocha. So we're going to coat this real quick. To go with our locomotive for our Easter train. I'm really trying to get this video done for you guys. It's a lot of painting. Here I'm painting the roof in cameo pink. Just going around painting up the edges. Then I eventually decided to paint the whole thing. Here I have three donuts I made out of plaster of Paris. I'm going to give them a coat of the same color paint. So it all matches. And right now we're working on the locomotive part of our train. So I'm going to give that a quick dry, and you'll see that through the whole video. Give it a quick second coat. I really wish painting all was this fast. Gosh, that would have been so nice. Now I noticed the wood soaked up a lot of the paint, so I have to give this a second coat. And that's why I decided to paint the backs too. Because I figured you're going to be able to see in. So I might as well paint the whole thing.
Then I'm going to take my donuts and take some Mod Pies and glaze them up. Giving them a second coat of the Mod Pies. Now I have these two eggs I got from Walmart for 98 cents. And I was going to use the one part that was curved on top, but I decided to use the one with the flat bottom. That way it would be easier to put the wheels on. And it has holes in it, so I'm just filling in the two holes with some hot glue. Now, in advance, I'm apologize. It's not all in frame. Usually, I have too much of me showing in frame, and this time, I don't have enough. And I have so much stuff on this table, the house and the donuts and all, I keep going out of frame. So, I'm going to apologize in advance. So, I have my cameo pink, and... Oh, I can't remember the name of it, but... And I have two wet sea sponges here. So we're going to take some of our blue. At least that's all I was. Nope, we're going to do the pink one first. Nope, we're taking the blue. Jesus! Sorry. So it's blue cotton color with a wet sea sponge. And I'm just going to dab my paint into the sea sponge and just sponge it all over my egg. And this is where I'm bringing it close to me so I can see. And not realizing I was going out of camera frame, so I apologize. So that's what it looks like. do the pink egg with the cameo pink again we're just dabbing it on randomly That's what that one looks like so far. Just going to give them a quick dry. Now I added too much of the pink. I 
in my mind. But it was also too light. So I'm going to take more of it. Because I didn't have enough on my sponge. And it looks really um, chalky. So I'm going to put on thick on some spots. Which then covers up a lot of the egg. But we will fix that. So I'm just giving it a quick dry again. Now I'm going to take this color Fruit Punch. And then I'm going to add that color to my egg. I know, I'm like, where can I put things? It's like, I got stuff everywhere. And then to the right of me, I have all different types of, of stuff that I made and that I could use. I like, have no room around me. Because everything is like drying. So now I'm going to take a marine blue. And do the same thing to the blue egg. Which almost looks like the color of the blue egg. And we're going to give that a quick dry. Now it's time to Mod Podge them. So I'm just going to put a nice even coat of my Podge over these eggs. To bring them back to the nice shine again.
and then we will dry these also. Here's where I decided to modify everything, even the house. I'm like, why not? Everything's all shiny. Here I started putting it together. Wasn't the brightest decision. And at that I put it together upside down. The side pieces. So I had to redo it anyhow. but. Not realizing on the side pieces there's a little edge that goes up and that goes into the bottom piece. Now we're going to do the same thing to our roof, but to have roof pieces, so I'm not sure if I'm using this roof or not, we'll see as we put this together. I mean, I do like that it has cutouts, but I also like the roofs that I made. Now we're going to work on the front of our locomotive, the donuts. So I'm just going to hot glue two of them together. And I will make sure when I go back down to finish filming that I adjust my camera. And if you all watch me, you know I changed my mind and changed my mind. And that's what I ended up doing. But here I'm taking some antique white.
And again, I'm planning this as I'm filming. So let's see what it turns out. And I'm going to mix the Mod Podge with the Antique White. So we can do the fry line on our donuts. And I used a donut mold for this, but of course, they don't come a solid donut, it's a half a donut, so. Then I'm just doing the edge on this donut here. I have so much paint and Mod Podge on my hand. Oh goodness, that's so gross. And I can't remember how I did my last train. I thought I only used three donuts, but I don't know. I ended up... Oh, then I realized you're going to see the inside if I did it this way, so I paint the inside. Because I was just going to use three donuts, which would have been one and a half donut. So I'm just going to dry this paint. I got so much paint and Mod Podge on my fingers, it's sticking everything. So I'm going to hot glue it onto this donut. And I didn't care for the look of it. I don't know. I don't remember how I did my other one. And from redoing my craft room, believe it or not, I was cleaning down there earlier, and I have no idea where my gingerbread train is right this second that I did my last one. It was like a fake beat gingerbread train that I did. So here we go. I'm gonna hot glue another half one and we're just gonna redo the other side. We're gonna use two full donuts. Luckily I had some extra pieces. I think I did make four. I don't even know. So I'm going to give it a coat of the light mocha again. That's my gingerbread color. Give it a quick dry. Give it another coat. I'm telling you, if I couldn't live without a heat gun when it comes to crafting. Waiting for paint and Mod Podge to dry. Goodness, that would took forever.
So again, I'm taking antique white. Because I need to do the pry line. And some gloss Mod Podge. I'm going to put another coat on this fry line. Because once it dried, it was pretty light. And then do this one. It's not perfect, it's not neat. Giving another coat on the fry line with the Mod Podge and Antique White. Coat with the mod fires again. Well, not again, because we never did this side. We just did this donut from scratch. Again, this was made out of plaster of Paris. I do have a video of how to make baked bakes and all out of plaster of Paris on a video. Then I'm just going to hot glue these together. Now let's get to, let's put gingerbread cottontail express together and decorate. So here I have my house and my donuts. And I have my foam trimmed that I made out of clay. So I'm going to cut that down the size to fit on an angle. So I can glue them on for the inside border of the roof. And we have my bottle caps. So now we have to turn this into a locomotive. So I'm just going to hot glue my foam clay trim on. Then I'm going to add it to the side. and just frame out my house. I wish I would have made more of these pieces.
Now, I do want to say part of this didn't record. My camera shut off without me knowing. And the only part you missed was me putting on the plaster Paris roof shingles that I made. And, um, uh, when I added the smokestack and I put a little bunny on the front. So I do apologize. I ran out of storage. And I actually had to clean a lot out so I can actually download this video to be able to put it up on YouTube. I guess because this video is so long and I have a lot of recording hours. Even though a lot of it was cut out. And when you see me tapping my fingers, I'm thinking. <laughs> of like what to do, what to do. I had no plan. I mean, I sort of had an idea of plan. But when you're dealing with different size items, you got to go with it and figure it out as you go. And then I really couldn't remember how I did my big, big gingerbread train. Like the very front, so. I mean, I know I had the donuts and ice cream and all, but I don't know. I just don't remember. So much glue, my ice cream scoop in the front of my donuts here. Now, a lot of people use like a toilet paper roll. I did have that, but not what I wanted to use. Now we gotta figure out these wheels. And to go with the different heights. And to make it look right. So I have these two little fake, fake, little mini cakes, abundant cakes. I was going to use them, and I grabbed them and glued little square wooden cubes from Dollar Tree. And I have my bottle caps here, because I need four wheels for each egg. And I'm going to grab my, um, oh god, I can't think, um, half macaroons, then I have my full macaroons. And now it's like, okay, how we figured this out? <laughs> How do I want to decorate this? So 
So that's what you see me doing here. First, I was going to do it this way. And I go and hot glue my macaroons and all one. And I was going to angle the blocks in between the two donuts, but... Well, uh, it just didn't look right to me. And, again, if you follow me, you know I always change my mind. So I'm going to take some of them little square blocks. And I decided I'm going to use the macaroons as the wheels. The bigger ones. On this local model. See, that just did not look right. One that was too big and bulky, too close, it just wasn't working for me. That's why I was wondering if I can use a macaroon in the front, too. I did grab my medicine caps, just in case. But I didn't make anything flat and big around enough to cover them. So I'm going to take my macaroon and hot glue these little square blocks on from the Dollar Tree <laughs> cracking myself up when I keep tapping my fingers I didn't realize I do that must have been something new I just started doing So we're going to do the same thing to two more of the macaroons. So we're going to add our other wheels on. And I realized they're too far down. Thank goodness it's only foam clay. You know it's strange? It's foam, but it does not like melt with your heat gun. I mean your um hot glue gun, because I tried. When I was doing the part that didn't record when I was putting a little smooth stack on. And I wanted to put a carrot in the tip of it. I tried to use my hot glue gun to put a hole in it. But it wouldn't work. So here I am gluing my two wheels together. The two blocks together. That has my two macaroon wheels on. And I know you're going to be able to see it. So I have to paint it the same color as the house. Of oh, that light mocha color. I 
I'm actually surprised this actually really worked. Guess the boom play plays pretty sturdy. Cause them two donuts are pretty heavy. So here I have my two gingerbread, Mr. and Mrs. Cottontail. And this is where I think it gets deleted after this. Or stops recording. Where I add these two on, then the roof, and then the smoke stack, and the little bunny on the front of the ice cream scoop. So I am so sorry. Aren't these two so cute? I really like how they turned out. Again, I have that set for sale. If you saw it earlier in my video. It shows you what all comes in the set. And this is where, yeah, my camera shut off. I'm so sorry. It even shut off recording this part too. But luckily I had to redo it again. So these are my little trim pieces that I made of like tulip flowers. And I just glued my bow on and gluing that around the border of the eggs. Cover up the edge, give it some little fancy detail. And I probably should have did a different color bow on the pink one, but oh well. It is what it is. It turned out really nice. All the like pastel colors anyhow. And during this whole video, I will be adjusting the camera back and forth, zooming in and out so you can see every detail as possible. So here you get to see how I did the first one. Again, this was from a push mold. I can't remember if I got it at Joanne Fabrics or Michael's. Something's telling me Joanne Fabrics because of the fact there was no Michael's or anything where I lived back in when I started with clay. I mean there probably was, but not like where I lived. Cause I lived in Maryland and the only craft stores was Michael and AC Moore and they were way out in Pennsylvania. So yes, I'm originally from Maryland. Born and raised there my whole life. From northwest area out in the county. So now I'm gonna take these bottle caps and my little half macaroons and I'm gonna make my wheels. Again, these are soda bottle caps. And a 98 cent Easter egg from Walmart. You do not know how hard it was to find an Easter egg to open in this direction. 
I had bought so many different molds I was going to make. Make one. I tried making one with a spoon. That didn't work out. I am so glad I found these Easter eggs. put these wheels too close and I'm pulling the paint on but they're still too close but there ain't nothing I can do about it I didn't like that cap or something I forgot how long it took me to do the last gingerbread train something like a week this one took me a week I so hate this little glue gun. I did order really long glue sticks, thank goodness. Because every time I turn around, you gotta put a glue stick in. See, there's the front of the train. I had the little, the roof on, the smooth stack with a little carrot and then I put a little bunny in the front but you'll see that in the final reveal or probably before that because I do add other pieces to it here I have this basket filler from Hobby Lobby I just went and got now this is one bag I had from last year this stuff looks raggedy I was going to use it until I realized man it looks terrible and I don't know why I use it to make fake cotton candy and all with it, but I don't know. The new bag is all nice and fluffy and it feels different, it feels softer. So I grabbed two bags this year, so I have it. Because I like using this for my trains. Now, if you don't have this, it's very easy to color the polyfill with chalk. It's messy and a pain, but you can do it. So I'm just adding the pink, the yellow, and the green. Add a little bit of glitter on there to give us a sparkle. And here's my little gingerbread kids. I'm going to take some Jenga blocks. And I'm going to glue my kids on so they'll stand up without falling over inside the polyfill basket, Easter basket filler. You know Hobby Lobby is the only place I've ever seen that has this. Oh, another way you could do it too is spray it with that color hairspray that they sell around Halloween. I bought lots of that one of my friends does that and a lot of her fake fake she um sprays thing with the color hairspray so I went and bought a lot of that
Now here I have find five gingerbread, but then I realized the one I never did coat with Mod Podge. I don't know why. I must have been like really tired. So I didn't use that one. Here I have a little clay bow that I had in my stash that I made last year. Out of cold porcelain clay. But I haven't done a video on that one. I should do a video on how to make cold porcelain clay. I think that's a really good clay. These things will not break. So luckily I had two of the same little bows. Super cute. I think these are so adorable. Now I found these little clay um, sprinkles you use for fake bakes at Believe it or not, Hobby Lobby this year, I was actually shocked. So I got the whole bag for like a dollar or something. And then I have these other ones here I was going to use, but I never did. Had these little flowers. I just stuck with the Easter ones. I had a lot of stuff around me like I had like there were some things like I even forgot to add in that I could have added in that I got on clearance at Valentine's some fake candy so here I'm just adding some Elmer's glue onto my egg and I'm taking putting a little white bunny then there was two little tiny ducks. So I got the white bunny. Oh, not ducks. Jesus. Chicken. Little chicks. So I put one little white bunny. I know I tried to zoom in, but it's still like really, really blurry. I wanted you guys to see it, but they're so tiny. I meant, like I said, sprinkles. Like you can put them on your fingernails, they're so little. So it was the one little thing that I used later on. So then I wanted to decorate this little Easter egg here. So adding some more of the Elmer's glue. And I'm just putting one in a little circle. Pieces, clay pieces on it. And then it came with these little white flowers. Like tulips. So I'm putting three dots of glue. And I'm going to add three little white flowers. I know it's super hard to see, I apologize. They are so tiny. Excuse me. <coughs> so now here's my train. So 
See there's where I put the little carrot and all on the top. And the little bunny on the front. And then I'm adding, oh, to the Easter baskets, I'm adding one little white bunny on each one of the Easter baskets inside the Easter basket. I wonder if you can see that on the final reveal or the photos I take. Probably. I don't know. So little. I mean, see how tiny they are. Maybe you can see it, I can't, I don't know. So that gingerbread I'm not using because I forgot to hide pause it. And I just wanted to get on to decorating, which we're gonna do now. We're gonna decorate our little, what do they call them? Cargo boxes? I don't know what you call I guess you would just call them. I don't know. I don't know what you would call these on a train. I guess cargo boxes. I'm not sure. I really wish I would have moved some scissors out of the way. Jeez. Through the whole video, they're there. And they're so big. And there's... The egg and all the little embellishments are so little, as you can tell. So I add my little chocolate... Easter Bunny lollipops I made. Out of clay. I had the white chocolate and the dark chocolate one. Then I got these little Easter eggs of Hobby Lobby this year too. And I've had these lollipops. And then I got this big box of candy off of Amazon. I've been collecting for a while. Perfect time to finally use my stash. Since I haven't made any fake bakes in a while. And then I have some little white bunnies there that I got a Dollar General for 99 cents. These are some gummy bears I just got from AliExpress. I 
which is like super cheap for this bag. A couple, I think it was like a dollar or two. Oh, here's these tiny, tiny little pieces of candy that are meant for your nails. They're so little. I don't even know how somebody made them. Like, they're so tiny. But it's actually a piece of candy with two little wrapper ends. So I decided I wanted to add that on to the boy gingerbread as his bow tie. So I'm glad you didn't miss much from the recording. Just me gluing on the two clay plaster pair of pieces on the roof and the little smooth stack and the carrot and the little bunny on the front. So now so I'm gonna take another one of these little pieces of candy. And there's actually a pink and green one in there that actually matches her dress. so tiny I can barely pick it up so I'm trying to see where I want to put it and then I drop it in there behind her ears so then I realize I have to lay this totally sideways for me to figure out where I want it so I'm going to put it on her one ear right here Even though they're little candies, they look like little bows, so I thought it was super cute. I love how this turned out. So here I have some more candies that I got of one of them website. And this was a cute little piece of candy. I forgot it look adorable in here. And then here's a little white bunny. They're like a plastic bunny. I was going to put one on that side, but I was like, no, because I already have a white bunny on that side. So I'm just sitting there trying to figure out how and what I'm going to add to this. Then I remember I have these lollipops that I made out of bees and toothpicks when I did my gingerbread train. I fake big gingerbread train. So I'm gonna add 40 little big lollipop looking things I made. And I'm surprised it wasn't sticking really easy through this polyfilm.
So you see me a lot going around figuring out what color to put where, what to put where, so it looks right. Boy, me, I shouldn't have had my watch on. My Android watch is only as big as a gingerbread. Oh, then I found this really cute little piece of candy. It had a bunny on it. I had to add that. I had no clue what I even had. Another lollipop. Then they have these cute little candies. It says sweet on it. These other little clay pieces of candy. So I just add them in. Again, it's just a matter of figuring out what to add, where to put it, what colors look right where, so you don't all just blend in. I'm taking these little plastic Easter eggs that keep rolling all over the place. So I'm adding some Easter eggs to it. I did buy two packs of these. I used a whole pack on this one. So I hope you all had a good Easter.
Now I'm just adding some little gummy bears. I didn't do anything for Easter. I just relaxed and then painted some of this, painted a lot of this stuff for this project here. Now I'm adding some of them little carrots I made out of clay. Figure why not? They sell candy, it looks like carrots. keep filling in with my Easter eggs and just keep adding things Now I'm gluing one that used to eat on sort of wood, wooden block. I'm sorry if you can't see sometimes. This project is small. I mean, the items are super small and my hand's bigger. <laughs> So I'm doing the best I can. Then I have these other little lollipops that came in the package. And I'm just trying to figure out where I want to put it. And then what color. See I have no idea. I'm like bouncing all around. I'm like, no, don't look right, no, don't look right. No, that color don't look right. Let's try something now. And now. Now I'm like, no, that one's pink. Yep, this one will work. Decisions, decisions, decisions. So I hope you guys really like this video. I know it's super long, but it gives you all great ideas. And again, I will link the other videos I mentioned in the description box. Where is my list? Oh, there it is. How to make perfect embellishments. And then I'm gonna add my other fake fake gingerbread train in there. Again, if you guys are interested in buying a gingerbread kids, let me know. Hit me up on Instagram or comment below. Just leave me a comment anyhow. Let me know what you think.
again I'll make it out of clay or plaster I would say clay I wouldn't do plaster or Paris and ship it too brittle it'll break not too sure about the donuts though because they're pretty thick but anyhow Let's see, I can't decide, make up my mind. I go back and forth, back and forth. I'm trying to put this lollipop in here. when I said okay can't say it because my hands in the way but I grabbed the toothpick and glued onto the back of it one good thing you know the problem is is the stick on the lollipop is so darn tiny so a toothpick helps raise the lollipop up and gives it more or something to stick into See how small the stick is on them? So I'm doing the same thing. I'm going a toothpick on. I didn't zoom out for you guys to watch me to glue a toothpick on. But I'm just telling you what I'm doing. See there's a toothpick and I just add some hot glue and just stick it in there. This did not want to stay. This lollipop gave me trouble. I tried gluing it to the egg, everything. just kept wanting to fall over them. But I'm going to fix that. See, look. Still moving. I'm going to put an egg there. It ain't going to move no more. This is where I'm trying to glue both of them to stay. I literally tried to glue them to the plastic. I don't know if I wasn't waiting long enough or what. Look, that lollipop is just turning sideways. Just like wants to go. I'm like done with you. You're getting an egg. Something to support you up. Now I'm shaking everything before gingerbread's falling forward. Let's see how long it takes for me to realize my gingerbread has fallen forward. Oh, right, now I'm doing something to the train. I could have swore I zoomed in on that part.
Oh, here we go. And I fixed the gingerbread that fell over him. So what I was doing was seeing if this piece of candy would look cute there, and it does. <clears throat> so, how gluing that on? Can't go wrong with adding more detail to our train. Then I'm like, hmm. Let's see if I can add some eggs to this train. See how it looks. And I like the way it looked. We're going to hot glue them in place. Oh, isn't this so adorable? I'm pretty proud of myself. I mean, I come up with some ideas, but this one... I don't know, it just turned out so good. So god darn cute. Like imagine how much you would pay for something like this. And a little Mr. and Mrs. Ginger Gingy Cottontail. It didn't take much at all to make. Just gingerbread, Mr. and Mrs. out of a mold, and two Easter baskets, and some bunny ears. So then I have the chocolate bunnies that I made. So I'm going to glue the dark chocolate one on this side. I thought that would be cute since this is Cottontail Express. Then I have the other one that was a light chocolate, milk chocolate. Let's go with milk chocolate and dark chocolate. I decided to add that on the front of the train too. It looks so god darn cute. Wait until you see the front view of it. Then I remembered I have these chocolate bars, but they're, those big ones are way too big. So I add the little ones in. It's in that final spot. Sorry, my watch is now keep flashing the light. Reflecting the light off of it into our eyes. We're almost done. I can't remember what else I did. Weird how the one on the right looks like it's fuller than the one on the left. But they have the same amount of stuff. Guess it's placement. So I decided to take some of these Easter eggs and I'm going to put it on the border of my house.
And I'm just adding some more candies and eggs into the little cart. God, there I am thinking again, tapping my fingers. <laughs> Like, what to do, what to do, what to do. Then I have the same white Easter bunny that I added on the front of the ice cream cone. And I had this, that lollipop that I made, the extra one. I was trying to find a place for it, but it just didn't look right anywhere. I'm like, where can I put this sucker? Nowhere. It just doesn't look right. So back to my little white bunny. And I'm going to glue them on the roof. Add some more glitter. Just clear glitter. And now for the final reveal. Tell me what you think in the comments below. If you like it, please give me a thumbs up. It really helps me out on YouTube. And helps YouTube get me more views, which I really need. So I got them holding the lollipop together. Or you can see the little bunny in the Easter basket. What else was I gonna look for? Well, the candy on their um clothes, but Yes, I know. Um, pain. When... Gotta keep adjusting. It is not this bright. It's all pastel colors. And there's the bunny on the front. Tell me that's not cute. I'm loving this train. And here's some pictures. Thanks for watching. Please like, subscribe, share, and comment. Oh, you can see their candy pieces. I did get in the picture. Yay! God bless you, and have a wonderful day. Thanks so much for watching. Any tips are appreciated, and I will give you a shout out in my video. Thanks so much. Happy crafting, friends.